Hi, this is National Master Dan Heisman. We're here with another video to help you improve your chess game. We haven't done one in an opening for a while, so I thought I'd do one on the G3 English. I thought I'd give you a start with a little background. Uh, my friend Bruce Ryan, who's an international master, was playing the G3 English for a long time. And when I got older and I decided I didn't want to keep playing all the complicated E4 openings, I thought his idea with playing C4 was a good idea. So I thought I would... So I got Bruce to show me a few things, especially in the Bobvinic variation of the G3 English. And he did, but I wanted some reference material. So Andy Soldis had a book out on the G3 English, and I purchased that, and it was a fairly easy-to-read book. So I thought, gee, I bet I could learn everything in this book. And I did. I think I even created a uh, database on the uh, book up, which is now called Chess Opening Wizard, for the whole book. And I was using that. And then about 10 years later, Grandmaster Tony Costin came out with a lot more comprehensive book called the Dynamic English on the same lines. So that updated things and gave me more information. And then another 10 years later, Grandmaster Michael Marin came out with a three volume set uh, on the English opening. So I'm showing that right here for volume, volume one of the three volume set, Michael Marin, the English opening volume one. So I have all three volumes of that, and there's so much information in those three volumes, I would never, ever, ever be able to learn everything in there. All right, so let's take a look. Let's minimize this, and we'll go back to uh, go back to my uh, board here. All right, so let's see. Let's make sure the board is centered. Move it over a little bit. All right, that should be good enough over here. Uh, raise it up a little bit. Anyway, let's take a look at it. So the whole idea of this opening is you play c4, and if black plays d5, then you take it, of course, and then you awl the queen with knight c3, and that wins a tempo. So he won't do that. That's not a line for black. But if he plays anything else, Let's say he plays knight f6, you play g3. If he plays e5, reverse Sicilian, you play g3. If he plays symmetric English, you play g3. And if he plays the queen's gambit decline kind of lines, you could play g3. So the nice thing is you can play g3 against any move they play pretty much. Now, a lot of times if you do that, Black could have you transpose into a, a queen pawn opening with d4. The idea of Marin's uh, repertoire is not to transpose into the queen pawn lines. If you play g3 and then play d4, you're probably going to get into a Catalan system. Most Englishes, especially in the older days, were played with knight c3 instead of g3. So, for instance, after e5, knight c3 was the main move. The idea is to put your knight behind the the C pawn and to try to control the D5 square, control the light squares. G3 is kind of a little bit of a refinement on that, also trying to control the light squares through the Theonketo bishop. And when you play G3, one of the advantages is if black does get in E6 and D5, you don't have to go into a queen pawn game. So let's, let's compare right now. Let's say black plays the E6 line. This is one of the popular lines and white plays knight c3, and black plays d5. If white now plays something like g3, black can play e4, uh, sorry, d4, and hit the knight. And notice the knight can't easily get to e4. If you play knight e4, we can trap the knight with something like f5. And now the knight, if we look at all eight spaces to go, doesn't have any good moves. So, <clears throat> so you can't put the knight in the middle. You'd have to probably put the knight back on b1, and that doesn't make sense. So what does that mean? Well, that means after knight c3, d5, you can't play g3. You have to play d4, but now we have a queen's gambit declined. And if you're playing the English, you, you don't want to study all the lines with the queen's gambit declined also. So if you're not willing to play d4 here, then playing the knight c3 lines is a little bit more suspect. Now let's compare that with what happens if you play g3. Let's say you play g3 and he plays d5. <clears throat> well, sure, you can play a Catalan now with d4, 
but you can also eventually play b3 to guard the pawn. Now you can't play b3 right away. Here's a little tactical quiz for you. b3, black to play and win material. So what should black do here? All right, you can pause the video if you want more time, but the answer is he can take on c4, and if white takes back on c4, you can play queen d4, double attacking the rook and the pawn on c4, and when he saves the rook with something like knight c3, then black wins a pawn. I fell for that trap in a speed game once. Speed games are good times to fall into traps so you don't fall into them in important games. So that means if you want to play b3, you should play something like knight f3 first to guard that d4 square so the queen can't go there. And now if black plays something like c5, if you want to guard the pawn with b3 now, you can. And if he takes the pawn, you can take back and the queen doesn't have the d4 square. If he plays d5, he's not blocking anything really. You can just fianchetto, castle, and then attack the center with either e3 or maybe d3 first followed by e3. And black has more space, but white has good break moves and good attacks against the center. And even though the game's fairly even, there's nothing wrong with this. It would be a lot weaker for white if white fianchetted his queen bishop right into the block. That would not make any sense to do that. So uh, bishop b2 there, not the right move. Better to play bishop to g2. Leave the bishop on this diagonal for later. All right, so let's go back. So that's one of the differences of playing knight c3 and playing g3 on the second move. So let's go back to g3 and let's go back to some of the main lines. Let's say black plays the reverse um, Sicilian. Then you can play g3 and now we're going to get into similar lines with knight c3, knight f6, bishop g2, d5, pawn takes, knight takes. And here white has the option not to play knight c3 which he does in a lot of these g3 lines. But if you do want to play it, you could play something like knight f3. And now e4 is no good. Why? Can you see? Well, if he plays e4, you have queen, sorry, queen check, double attacking the pawn and the king and winning the pawn. So he's not going to do that. You always have to watch out for these things. So black would probably play knight c6 instead. And now knight c3, bishop e6 castle. And here, there's a, there's a trap that, that black often falls into. If he plays something like bishop e7, white can play d4, which is very, very good for white. So you can't allow him to do that. So the book move for black is to play, after castles, is to play knight to b6 to give an extra guard to that square. And now white usually plays something like d3. And now black plays bishop e7. And white could play something like a3 followed by b4. And this position has been played many, many, many times, both with the knight c3 line and with the bishop g, g3, bishop g2 line, which can transpose. Uh, lots of games have been played from this opening. Uh, perfectly good opening, grandmaster opening kind of thing for white. Let's go back a little bit. Let's do that one more time just to show you. <clears throat> g3. Knight f6 with the idea of playing d5, bishop g2, d5 before he can stop you, pawn takes, knight takes. And I just played knight f3 last time. You could also play knight c3. And now black could play bishop e6, knight f3, knight c6 transposing into the other line, castle, knight b6, the key move, d3, tabia. Okay, so that's the g3 line. One of the g3 line against, against the uh, open, reverse open Sicilian. Now, black doesn't have to play the reverse open Sicilian if he plays e5. When you play g3, one of the advantages of having not having the knight there is you could play for d5 right away. If they play for d5 right away with c6, it's very much the same thing as when you're playing an open Sicilian. So let's go back and compare. When somebody plays an open, sorry, not open Sicilian, a C3 Sicilian. When somebody plays a C3 Sicilian, you want to attack the E5 pawn. So the two main moves here for black are D5, with the idea that if he takes and you take with the queen, he can't AWL your queen and try to win a tempo with knight C3 because the pawn's on C3. So that's the main line. The other main line is to play knight F6 and attack the pawn since the knight's not guarding it. 
And after e5, knight d5, d4, we have again one of the main lines of the of the c3 Sicilian. Why am I showing you this? Because in the English, it's the same thing upside down, with white having the the black. Sorry, the the kind of the black pieces. Let's play e5, g3, and now he can play c6. And now the the idea is to attack this pawn on e4. You can either play knight f3, e4, knight d5, which is the same thing we just looked at except upside down with white having an extra move g3. Or again, upside down of what we looked at before is to play d4, c ta e takes d4, queen takes d4, and he can't play knight c6, hitting your queen. And white has retained his regular opening advantage here. So when they play that early c3, c6 move, you don't want to just let's go back to the c6 line g3 c6 you don't want to just play bishop g2 and let them play d5 and set up a big center like this it's not disastrous but it's not the right idea black has gotten at least equal easy equality and if you let him do something like this then he's going to possibly even get a bigger advantage if you're playing too passively all right so let's go back to our e5 move e5 g3 and as I said, he could play c6, he can play, he can play knight f6 and d5. Something a lot of people do here is they just develop their king bishop. And when they do that, what you want to play for is to play to play d4 and b4 with first playing e3. And now if they try to fight you for the square, you can play a3, threatening b4. They try to stop you there too. And now you play knight to e2. And the idea is that after they castle, you could play knight c3. Now you've got three pieces on the square. They can't play d5. If they play d6, you can play castle. And let's just make a random move for black. You could play rook e8. And now white gets d4 in. He's got three guards for d4. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and the bishop has to move again. And white has a little bit of a space advantage in the middle. There's actually a trap in the same line. Let's go all the way back to the start and play that again. So e5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop c5. Common move. He can't play bishop b4 because you just start attacking it with the pawns. If he plays bishop b4, you play a3. That's one of the differences also between the knight c3 lines and the g3 lines. In the knight c3 lines, he can play bishop b4 in this position. Bishop b4 doesn't make any sense at all. So e3, knight c6, a3, a5 to stop b4, knight e2 to threaten d4, castle, knight bc3, d6, castle. Let's say he plays bishop e6 and attacks the pawn. This is yet another trap in the English. There's not a lot of traps in the English, but this is one of them. So let's see if I can take, I can't take that line off. Let's just leave it there. So he, black is threatening bishop takes c4. What should white do here? How should white respond after bishop e6? So if you want, you can stop the video and see if you can find it. And the answer is you can play d4 and counterattack the bishop. And whether he trades or not, it doesn't matter. You take back with the pawn. And when he saves the bishop, you fork the, the bishop and the knight and you win a piece. I actually once uh, had an expert fall into this trap against me in, in a club game at the Mainline Chess Club. So, you know, there, there actually are some traps. This is a fairly common idea to, to do this trap where you can attack one piece with, with the pawn push and then, uh, then fork on the second pawn push. So it's a really good pattern to know. It's one of those 2,000 basic tactic patterns that come up again and again. All right, let's go back to the start. Um, all the way back to uh, c4. Okay, we've been looking at the reverse Sicilian lines. Black could also play something like knight f6, g3, and d5 right away. And again, the best way to save the pawn here is to take it. And when he takes with the knight, we start attacking the knight. If he plays e5, that transposes into that line we looked at earlier with the Sicilian. But if he doesn't, let's say he plays something like c5, well, you could play knight c3 now and hit the knight. And if he takes, you would take back toward the middle with a nice center, getting ready to play d4. 
And otherwise, he's got a little bit of a problem. If he moves the knight back, then your bishop has a free line into here and holds up his queenside development. And you've got some good control over the center here. So that's, that's a reasonable way to play it too. Let's go back again. C4, he could play it like a Dutch. Here's the line I like against the uh, Dutch for the against the English. So you play g3, knight f6, bishop g2. If he plays e6 like a Dutch, you can play knight f3. If he plays d5, castle. We're not worried about pawn takes pawn. We can always play check, even though that's probably not the best move. Usually they play something like bishop d6 or bishop e7, d3, castle, knight d2, here. And now there's a little trick that white can play. White can play e4, d takes, takes, and if they take, you take with a knight. Let's say he trades queens, he takes your knight, and now you play something like... Um, Knight to g5, hitting this pawn twice. He can't guard it if he pushes it. You take it. If he takes here first, you take back, and he still can't guard this pawn. And you're going to get the pawn back with the lead in development and the bishop pair if he takes that way. So there, there's a nice little trick there that, and that's in the Dutch stone wall against the English. Notice you can't do that in the regular Dutch. If you said, oh, I'm going to try that with the regular Dutch, that doesn't work. If you're, in, if you're in the regular Dutch, then you've got the pawn on d4, and then it's a lot, lot harder to play e4 in those kind of lines. The nice thing about playing the English against the Dutch is that you, you can use the d-pawn to play e4 in those kind of lines. Not the only thing you can do, but just an idea, and it's a good idea to fianchetto against the Dutch anyway. So if you're used to playing the g3 English and they play the an f5 against you against c4 then you just play your normal stuff with g3 that leaves us with uh, one major line to look at which is the um, we're gonna look at the symmetric English so here's the symmetric English and here the break moves for white are b4 and d4 and you could play either way and there's a million ways for both sides to play this as I said you generally play g3 and Black could play like knight c6, bishop g2 if he plays g6. Here, I think Marin wants you to go into a Bodvinic system. So let's take a look, a little look at the Bodvinic system. The Bodvinic system is e4 and then knight g2, and he could play either his knight to f6 or he could play the knight to e7. Both are possible. Let's say for the sake of argument, he plays knight f6, knight c3 castles d3 this setup with these moves here these eight moves for white this is called the Bodvinic system and you can play the Bodvinic setup for white or black you for instance let's say let's go back to the start of the game let's say we're black we'll flip the board for a second flip board okay go back to the start all the way back Let's say someone plays an irregular opening against you, G B3, and you and you know something about the Bodvinic system because you play it for, for white. Well, you could play it for black too, bishop to B2, D6, and now if they play D4, you take it, and whatever they take back with, you can AWL them. So let's say they instead they play it like an English and play C4, you can play C5. They say, well, let's Fianchetto to get on this nice diagonal. Knight c6, bishop g2, g6. Let's say they want to develop their knight to e2, e, bishop g7, knight e2. There's knight that knight e7, castle, castle. We now see those same eight moves we just saw for, for white. I'm playing them for black. I'm playing the Bodvinic setup against his irregular b3 opening. And I've got a very, very nice solid position. Yes, this d5 square is a little weak. He could try to take advantage of that, but I have a lot of control over the dark squares. And my development is very nice. For instance, if white plays like d3, I can play bishop e6, knight c3. Let's say he play, well, I could play here queen d7 and get the, get the battery on the uh, c8 to h3 diagonal. 
queen c2. I don't think I would trade off the bishop here. I might just play f5 and get space. He could play f4. And then I would get my other rook in the game. And now I've got all my pieces playing. Something like that. What's that got to do with the English? Well, we're basically just kind of playing an English in reverse for black. So if you understand the ideas for white, you can get them for black. Let's go back to the reverse, sorry, the symmetric uh, English some more. Let's flip the board back again. <clears throat> so g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight f3, knight f6. If you wanted to here, you could play your break move right away. There's a lot of lines in the symmetric English where white plays d4 here, and after pawn takes, knight takes, black plays something like knight c6, white castles, black castles, white plays knight c3, and I think the main move here in this line is for black to take the knight, white takes, black plays d6, with the idea of maybe repositioning the knight, depending on what white does, and again, white has a normal opening advantage here, black's perfectly okay. Again, very, very common lines, Remember at the start of the video, I told you that Grandmaster Marin wrote three volumes on this G3 English. So it's not like, oh, gee, I've been learning E4 and there's so much to learn. I'll, I'll learn something where there's only a couple lines. I'll take up Dan's G3 English. Well, as I said, Grandmaster Marin has more information on the G3 English in those three volumes than I'd ever learned in my whole life. And we're seeing right now all the different lines that Black can play. As I said, he's got about, you know four or five main lines. One of the main lines is symmetric English, which we just did. Another one is to play e6 followed by d5. Another line is to play reversed, reverse Sicilian, but this breaks up into actually two major lines. One of them is where he plays the early d5 and we get a reversed open Sicilian. It's really a reversed, hype, uh, sorry, reverse accelerated dragon where white has a tempo in hand. What do I mean by that? Well, again, let's go back and show you. If white plays e4 and black plays c5, Sicilian, white plays knight f3, black plays knight c6, white plays d4, black plays c takes d, white plays knight takes d4, and black plays g6. You might say, what's that got to do with anything, Dan? And the answer is, oh, this is the same position we just looked at, except with white having the position that black has and vice versa, with white having an extra tempo. So let's look at that again. Here, here, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5 is the exact same thing upside down with the colors reversed, except that white has that extra tempo because he's going first and he has the position that black normally would have in the accelerated dragon. All right, what else did we say? Well, he, he can play these lines where he brings out the bishop. Very similar if he brings out the knight. If he brings out the knight, and you don't want him to play this d5 move, you can play knight c3 now, and now playing d5 is going to be very difficult. Here he could play bishop to b4 because your knight's out. Some people don't want to allow that. Some people, for white, want to play like knight f3 first, and you say, well, if they play knight f3, can't they play e4 here? No, because knight here hits the pawn twice. If you play d5 to save it, I'll remove the guard. If... Uh, you play queen e7, I can play queen c2 and attack the pawn, although he's got this move with the knight, so it does get a little complicated. Not quite that easy. But uh, normally, here white could also play, as I said, knight c3 to stop d5. Knight f3 is a move. If you're really worried, you could play d3. Most grandmasters don't play d3 in positions like this. You see a lot of amateurs playing d3, but d3 is not a real major line. Normally, you want to do that break with d4. Okay, so we're looking at these lines with g3. Black can play it like a reverse Grand Prix Sicilian with f5 followed by knight f6. That's a rare line, but he could do that. Uh, black could just play it like a King's Indian. He could play knight f6, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight f3, castle, castle, d6. So black has played a complete King's Indian setup, which he can do against almost every opening. If you do it against e4, it's called the Pierce defense. If you do it against d4, c4, it's the King's Indian defense. If you do it here against the English, it's called the King's Indian setup against the English. If white wants to transpose into the Fianchetto line of the King's Indian, 
He can play d4 here, and this now becomes really a d4-c4 opening. Or white could keep it like, like in English, he could play knight c3. In fact, if he wants, after knight c3, let's say black plays e5, and he avoids the symmetric English, white could play the Botvinnik setup against the e5 line in this line. And in, that, in fact, in Grandmaster Costin's book, The Dynamic English, he likes playing the Botvinnik setup more against the e5 lines for black than he does against the symmetric English. What do what I mean by that? Well, again, going back a move, black could have played here, and white could play here. Grandmaster Marin suggests that in his book. In Costin's book, he doesn't suggest after, he likes playing e4 after e5. He doesn't like it as much after c5, but obviously it's playable. Grandmaster Marin thinks it's perfectly good. Let's turn on the engine just for the fun of it here. Let's get out of this and let's turn on the engine. See what the engine thinks after c5 is white's three best moves. So Stockfish thinks white's best move and the one that gives them the most advantage is to play the break move d4. You're always trying to play b4 and d4 in these moves. Thinks if you play d4, you've got a normal white advantage here. He could either play knight c6 or take it. All right, one final line on this. Um, symmetric English. If you want to play it real slowly with white and not break with d4, and instead break with b4, what you can do is play in this kind of position, play knight c3, and when he plays something like this, play rook to b1. You're not worried about bishop f5 because you can always play d3 and e4. And if he plays knight c6, then you go for this break move first. You play a3, and if he tries to stop you, you can still get more pieces on that. You could either play d3 and bishop d2 and maybe knight d5. Or if he doesn't stop you and he tries to play the same thing, you can play here, takes and takes, and he's a little late. You're, you're already threatening to play b5. So probably if black wanted to do this, he would have probably have to have delayed d6 for a move. So maybe after... After knight c6, rook b1, instead of playing d6, he could play rook b8 and play completely symmetrically. a3, a6, b4, c takes b4, a takes b4, b5, same idea. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And now we have a perfectly symmetric position where it's white smooth. Stockfish is saying white retains a normal white advantage with d4. Black has to play d5. And now the engine is suggesting you can play knight e5, and he can't take the knight and double your pawns because the pawn will hit this knight and that will remove the guard and he'll lose the d pawn. So white's a little better. Again, there's a million things we could spend hours going through Grandmaster Marin's book looking at a million lines, but if these kind of things appeal to you, we have sort of semi-closed positions for the most part, but we've got a lot of tension in the position and white retains his, uh, his possibilities of getting an advantage. So the g3 Sicilian is a very major idea. It's not super popular at the, at the super grandmaster level. It has certainly been played many times, but it is a very viable opening, and there's a lot of richness in the play, as you can see. Hopefully you enjoyed this introduction to the G3 English with an overview. If you like the videos, you can subscribe to the channel. We have 5,000 subscribers now. Thanks. Best thing you can do is tell your friends about the channel, Dan Heisman Chess, and you can like the video, of course, if you'd like. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.